Um, on Monday, I want to say Wednesday, today's Monday, you're going to see some controls. And those controls will have three different organisms in a glucose and a lactose broth. So I, I just, for speed here, just put GL. Glucose is a monosaccharide, right? Lactose is a mono or di? Disaccharide. That's some humans that are lactose intolerant can't break apart the bonds between the two molecules. So that's for later, but for now, no, glucose and lactose are different carbohydrates. Anita is going to inoculate three control organisms, Pseudomonas, Entrobacter, and Providencia, to show you that some bacteria can ferment all of those sugars, some bacteria can't ferment either one, some can only ferment one of the sugars. So, what you have to do today is pretty simple, and that is you're going to inoculate your gram positive into a glucose broth and a lactose broth, and your gram negative into a glucose broth and a lactose broth. So you're gonna put those at whatever you think your unknowns have for their optimal temperature. So I, I don't know your unknowns, but that's where you're gonna put these. The controls are going at 37 degrees for 48 hours. So let's take a look at what these tubes look like. So we're, we'll do them one at a time just so it's not a little too long for you. So glucose and lactose are sugars and they're dissolved in a broth. And the broths kind of look like this. You'll see, it looks sort of orangey red. The reason they look orangey red is because in addition to the glucose or lactose, which you can't see, it's in there, you have to trust us, there's also a pH indicator. And that pH indicator, if you read the lab, is phenol red. And at neutral pH, it's about this color, sort of an orangey color. Neutral pH is sort of orange. But if the bacteria ferment the sugar in the tube, they're going to produce acid. Always, always, always in fermentation, there's acid produced, some kind of acid, okay? There's always acid. So what's gonna happen to the pH if the sugar is fermented? It's the pH is gonna go down. So acid conditions decrease the pH. So these tubes, if the bacteria in them ferment the sugar, these, these tubes will turn yellow. Yellow indicates acid conditions. So on Wednesday, you're gonna look at these tubes and you'll have just taken a test and you'll be like, I can't think. So you're gonna be coloring things in. <laughs> and then maybe figuring them out over the break, but hopefully you can notice that if it stays this color, it didn't ferment the, the sugar in it. If it turns yellow, it did ferment the sugar in it. Additionally, you'll notice the way she drew this, she drew a little teeny tube that's inside of these, and you can see them on here, they're actually, these ones this semester are a little bit longer. The little tube in there is called a durum tube. So the durum tube, is a tube that catches any gas that might be produced during the fermentation. So some bacteria, when they ferment the sugar, they produce a gas and they get, the gas will get caught in that little durum tube. So on Wednesday, you're gonna look first for color. If it stays orange, it's a negative. It doesn't ferment the sugar, but if it turns yellow, you're gonna look and see if in the Durham tube there's gas in there. And that helps you determine what sort of fermentation the bacteria used. So you might remember from that first test so long ago, you might remember that I asked you to know about a couple of types of fermentation. Remember this, there was mixed acid fermentation, there were butanodiol fermentation, there was 
lactic acid fermentation. So different bacteria use different fermentation pathways. Some of them make gas, but all of them make acid. So you're gonna look in here and see if it's, uh, if it is a yellow color, then it fermented the sugar. And you're gonna peek and see if there's a gas bubble to produce. So we'll show you that when you see the controls to something to compare it with. So glucose, I'm holding a glucose and a lactose tube in my hand. They really look identical. So when you come up here, you have to pay attention to what rack they're in. One says glucose and one says lactose. Also to help you, Anita, paints on the top of the metal cap, blue on the glucose one, blue on the glucose one, <laughs> yellow on the lactose, that doesn't alliterate or whatever. Um, <laughs> but, but sometimes when people are taking caps off, they get them mixed up. So make sure that you know the blue are the glucose ones and the lactose ones have yellow. <laughs> and you're gonna need two glucose and two lactose because you're going to put your gram positive in a glucose and a lactose and your gram negative in a glucose and a lactose. I would label these all up so you don't get them mixed up. So you know which one's glucose, which one's lactose, which one's your gram positive, which one's your gram negative. So come on up with, you need a rack probably because you can't set these down on the ground. You need your rack guys. You need two glucose and two lactose. Go ahead and inoculate. 